जय जय श्री राधे श्री वल्लभादि शखी जय जय श्री कृष्ण टुडे इज द टेंथ डे ऑफ द रीडिंग्स श्री चौरासी वैष्णव की वार्ता वार्ता नंबर फोर द स्टोरी ऑफ पद्मनाभ दास जी अ ब्राह्मण फ्रॉम कनौज पार्ट वन Padmanabh Das used to sit on an elevated seat in his own home and read the scriptures for an income. He didn't need to go out to read; people came to him to listen. Once Sri Acharyaji came to Kanauj and Padmanabh Das went to see him. Sri Acharyaji was giving a discourse on the Shrimad Bhagavatam, and Padmanabh Das had the realization that Sri Mahaprabhu Ji was indeed the Lord Himself. He took shelter in Sri Acharyaji and was given the first initiation of the Lord's name, and thereafter. The second Brahma Sambandh initiation, through which he surrendered body, wealth, heart, and soul to the Lord. One day at the start of the afternoon and evening services, Utapan, Sri Acharyaji was at Damodar Das Sambalware's house, and he was reading his Tatvarta Nibandh, his commentary on the Shrimad Bhagavatam. Padmadab Das came there, bowed low to his guru, and sat down to listen. This is the shlok that they studied. Pathaniyam prayatnena, sarva hetu, vivarjitam. Vidvrityartham neva yunjita, prani kanta gata gatairapi. Tadbave yataiva syad. Tata nirvaham nirvaham acharit. त्रयानाम ये न केनापि भजन कृष्णम कृष्णम आवाप न्यूयात भजन कृष्णम उन कृष्णम आवाप न्यूयात The essential purport purport of this is that one should never use the Shrimad Bhagavatam and its reading as a way of earning wealth. Padmanabh Das took water in his hands and swore that he would never recite any scripture for money again. He took this vow in Sri Acharyaji's presence. Hearing the oath, Sri Acharyaji asked him just how he intended to support himself and his family since he was a Brahmin. He suggested that he read the Mahabharat or other similar books. Padmanabh Das interjected that he had taken a vow not to speak, and so he would not. Rather, he would be. Beg at the houses of his religious clients. He started to do this, and then they all respected him. But then it came to his mind that even after dedicating his life to being a Vaishnav, he had now stooped to begging. This is not right, he thought. I wear the sacred thread of a Brahmin and the kantis of Vaishnava, so this way of life is not appropriate for me. He vowed not to do this either. Sri Acharyaji again asked him, "What will you do now to earn a living?" Padmanabh Das announced that he would trade in wood and bundles of sticks, which he would collect himself. He continued this till the end of his life. Bhav Prakash, the inner meaning. In the eternal lila, Padmanabh Das is Swamiji Saki named Champakalata. When Sri Acharyaji saw Padmanabh Das's enthusiasm to beg for a living, he was very pleased and said that all Vaishnavas. Brahmin numbers should be as determined as him. Some time later, Sri Acharyaji took all of Padmadas, Padmanabh Das's family, into his shelter and initiated all of them with the Lord's name and Brahma Sambandh. Padmanabh Das then asked Sri Acharyaji what he should do, and the reply was, "Make service to the Lord." However, Padmanabh Das told him, "I have read the Puran, the Mahabharat, and many other scriptures, but I still find it really hard." to relate to and have full faith in the form of shri krishna maybe if i could actually see him then my faith would become firm faith is a fine re- fine reward it's what i seek shri acharyaji then invited him to go to braj with him telling him that there he would show him krishna's form he took him to a place near mahawan where lord krishna performs his playful pastimes shri acharyaji sat down on the other side of the river yamuna ji on her banks in a place named karanawal 
It was morning time when a large part of Sri Yamnaji's banks collapsed and a huge form of Sri Krishna, as tall as a palm tree, emerged and told Sri Acharyaji to perform his service. Sri Acharyaji addressed him thus, Nowadays there is not a Vaishnava on earth who would be capable of serving you in this massive form. If you really desire to be served, then please make your size into one which will fit into a person's lap. Sri Krishna's form then became small enough that the top of his head came up to Sri Acharya's chin when he was sitting in his lap. On that Swarupa were visible the symbols of Sri Yamanaji, Sri Giriraji, the cowherd boys and maidens, cows, forest bowers and all the places in the land of Raj. Sri Acharya gave him the name Sri Mathuranathaji. Then he asked Padmadab Das if all his wishes had come true. Padmadab Das was ecstatic and replied that everything had been made possible through Sri Mahaprabhuji's grace alone. Sri Mahaprabhuji remarked that he would, should be totally satisfied with whatever he received and forthwith serve the Lord. With his permission, Padmanabh Das took Sri Mataranaji back with him to Kanoj, where he served his Lord most lovingly. Padmanabh Das thought to himself, I used to beg, but then, having become a Vaishnava, that seemed most inappropriate. Sri Acharyaji advised me, always to be satisfied with whatever I am granted. The ultimate state is not to have to do any gainful work, but simply to worship Krishna. So he kept to this way and served the Lord. Part 2 Once Sri Acharyaji was in Prayag and Padmanabdas was with him, a little way into the night he asked Padmanabdas to bring his wife to him from the other side of the river. He got up straight away and, and got ready to go. Some other Vaishnavas who were sleeping there remarked that he might be mad to go out that time of night, since all the boats were already tied up and boatmen all asleep in their homes. Padmanabh Das was solely intent on fulfilling Sri Acharyaji's commands and knew that it would not be impossible to fulfil them. Padmanabh Das got to the side of the river and looked around. Then a young boy appeared with a small boat. He asked Padmanabh Das if he needed to go to the other side. Yes, he replied, and the bow, the boy rowed him to the far bank. When they reached there, the boy asked Padmanabh Das if he would need needing to return, and when he said yes, the boy said he would wait for him for some time, but he should try to be quick. Padmanabh Das collected Sri Akaji and brought her back in that boat. When they had been dropped off at the river bank, Padmanabh Das turned around but could no longer see the boy or the boat. Sri Acharyaji told Padmanabh Das to take rest. He went to the place where all the other Vaishnavas were sleeping. Some of them awoke and asked him where he had been and what he had been doing. When he told them about his journey to bring Sri Akaji, they reprimanded him and he had, and said that he had given a lot of trouble to the Lord. They even went to Sri Acharyaji and said the same thing, but he set them straight by telling them that Padmanabh Das had been setting, acting on his orders alone and that they should not say anything to him. This story shows us that a Vaishnava is not to be blamed if they trouble the Lord on behalf of the Guru. All is well if the Guru is pleased. That night was the appropriate time for Sri Gosaiji to enter Sri Akaji's womb. Sri Acharyaji had therefore ordered Padmanabh Das to ferry her over and Sri Tagoji provided the boat. All of this was for the sake of Sri Gosaiji's appearance, which was of utmost importance. This tale also shows Padmanabh Das's unshakable faith in his guru and his determination to fulfil his teacher's every last wish. Jai Jai Shri Radhe Shri Vallabhadi Shiki Jai We continue tomorrow with part three of Padmanabh Das's Vartha.